Hello, this is Eric of Sparky Tech and welcome to my review of the iPassport A6. Now, previously I reviewed this one. Now we have this one. Still use this one because I just love it as a wireless keyboard to my PC. It has low power standby so I have to press the volume key to wake it back up but this is going to be quite different than this. Let's get to it. Let's start this off with some obvious differences. The new one is actually smaller, very hard to see on camera, but it's physically thinner. Okay, that's not much of a difference at all, is it? But we have something obviously different. We have an IR blaster. That's what the little eyelid is right here. In the back end, so I've got the old version, we have this huge dongle that's massive. But one thing that's kind of crazy is the battery between the two is exactly identical, but we have a small, normal sized dongle on the new one. In terms of physical obvious buttons, we have a voice search, which this does not have, this old version. Buttons, almost like a gaming system on the top, which didn't exist on the old version. We have also USB Type-C rather than micro USB as well. This remote control has wide compatibility with Windows, Android, and Linux-based devices. First question you may have is how do you set this up to the computer? The easiest way is to use the USB dongle. We have Bluetooth as well, mind you, but let's use that USB because more compatible. You just put the port in and be done with it. So we open up the back and reveal that battery and dongle in the back. We take that out and then we put it into our computer. Now let's say this is the future and you don't have any um, you don't have any USB type A. You can always use an adapter of type A to type C as long as it's at least USB 2.0 data rated, not a problem. So that's an option if need be. Now we have that and we now turn on our remote control. So you'll see the light as we do right here and you make sure that you are on RF. Now we don't see it moving much. Can we change that? Well, let's change that right now. If you're using Windows 10, you're going to go to the little setup cog. Otherwise, if you had Windows, an old version of Windows, you'll probably go to control panel and you go to mouse and keyboard. How do I do this in Windows 11? Well, let me show you that. I go to the setup cog. Then I go from home, I go down to system, I go to Bluetooth and devices. From there, I go down to mouse. So let's look at this right now. It says right here, mouse pointer speed. If I go right up, the responsiveness of this is now right up as well. Now to start things off, let's go to YouTube. I can type it on the keyboard. Press enter. The function button right here works together with another button. So we can see there's a blue logo. So if I want to go page up and page down, I can scroll through things just like that, just like a regular keyboard. Now, if I was watching a video, which I'll show you right now. Hello. Hello, you beautiful handsome devil. What did I do? More cinematic footage. <laughs> And it's turning up the volume up and down. What if I want to mute it? Just like that. And now if I want to pause, I could press the little pause button. Play pause. Right beside. We can still scroll through with the little arrows on top as well. So how do we set up Bluetooth? We're going to get it off of our F and we're going to go to BT Bluetooth on here. So now that's selected. And now I have to add it within my computer. 
in my computer, if I'm using an old version of Windows, for instance, I'm going to go to uh, Devices and Printers. From there, I have the Home System and Bluetooth menu, and I go to Devices. Or I can simply use the Settings cog and go to the same place, Bluetooth and Devices. And from there, I can turn on Bluetooth. I'm going to add a device, and I'm going to search up Bluetooth device. There we go. It shows A6. The first time I added it before, it said keyboard. And there we go. Now here's our USB dongle that's now removed. And let's see if Bluetooth's working. Can we see our mouse cursor? Let's close that box. It's done. Oh yeah, we can top on our screen to uh, open and close just like you would a laptop cursor. Or you can simply right click. Do you have your left click? Yeah, it's the other mouse button. See that menu opened? Let's click somewhere else and left click again. Wait, where's that sound come from? Which is fine. This is arguably the most technologically advanced smart phone on the planet, even after it not having changed much in the last three years. The inner flexible display is down a bit more. screen selfie camera, which is kind of cool. The exterior display is almost the same size as a regular smartphone with full functionality, which makes. And so you can see, we can control from a distance away, especially with that Bluetooth. Oh, now let's see if we can add a TV. So I want to learn this remote button right there to this one that says there's no connected device. So what I'm going to do now is press the function and the TV button. Hold it down. Now I'm going to press against here and press the button until it goes solid. As we saw right now, it's solid. Now I'm going to press that button there. And now I'm going to press that TV button. And there we go. It seems for buttons to learn, I'm limited to like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And there might be another button somewhere else, but I haven't figured it out because I don't seem to be able to program these keys. But either way, I got the volume, I got the mute, I got that menu, the other menu, power off. What are my thoughts on the iPassport A6? This device is very effective to PC. I thoroughly enjoyed using it. When it came to the TV, I found it a bit more confusing. Luckily I figured it out and I wanted you to know so you can figure it out. Now one thing that's cool to know is this can be used with a voice functioning TV. If you have the option for voice, or a programmable button, you could program that in here and control the voice on your TV to do searches. That's one thing I couldn't show because I don't have a voice search TV capable device. But either way, small, effective, a recommendation for sure. This is probably one of the coolest devices I reviewed in a while. Very simple, but very useful especially when sitting back and watching movies, because that's what I often used it for. This is Erica Sparky Studio. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're subscribing right now or already are subscribed, then you, yes, you are awesome. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.